Hi drummers, hope you're well. Right, classic drum intro for you here. This is Ballroom Blitz by The Sweet, played by Mick Tucker, and uh, I've been asked about this loads. It goes like this. It's based on what we'd call a train beat, right? So a train beat is a single stroke roll. If you're right-handed, play those right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And what you do is you accent with your right stick, if you're right-handed, the two and the four, right? The back beat. One, two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two and three and four and. In the sort of basic version, you'd hit a kick on the one and the three. And you got yourself a, a basic uh, train beat, kind of like you hear in country music or like um, bluegrass or something of that nature, uh, or maybe folk music, all, all over the place really. But I guess a country music thing. It puts me in mind of country music the most uh, when you first hear that version. Uh, maybe skiffle as well. Maybe a skiffle kind of vibe. This one is uh, a little bit more to it than that. So it just builds on that a little bit. The bass drum part is a two-bar long phrase that goes one two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. Which just gives it a little more, more movement, man. A little bit more of a grooviness to it, in my opinion. And in the second bar, you add an accent just before the last beat four. So the accent pattern goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. It also has a, a slight swinginess to it, like a slight shuffle to it, like the, the main roll, one and two and three and four and one and two, that kind of glam rock-ish kind of in the gap sort of swing to it. What's funny is, to my ears, the unaccented notes sound more swung than the accented notes, which makes it quite difficult to truly nail it, the feel, I would say. <laughs> Somewhere like that. Um, I wouldn't worry about that too much at first. Now, the thing is, Obviously, like with all of these grooves, you might well see that and hear that and go, yeah, cool, no big deal, that's fine. It all depends where you're at with your drumming, doesn't it? If you're building it, if you if it, if it isn't like instinctively easy, that's totally fine. I would say build it up uh, one step at a time. Uh, one great way to do this is just to build up, uh, build up the level. So the bass drum part, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. I'm actually playing the hi-hat there on the, uh, on the two and the four as well, as you can hear. Uh, I feel like that gels it all together really, really well, and it's just the sort of thing a drummer would play. It's actually quite hard to hear on the record whether Mick Tucker's doing that or not, uh, but uh, so it's, that's optional, I would say. I, I, I would personally do that, especially live. I always feel like that gels the whole thing together. So one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. So you want to get that going, and then I reckon add in the unaccented roll, single stroke roll over the top. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. So I would say the foot part is is like first bass. The, then the unaccented snare drum single stroke roll is second bass. Then maybe just the train beat, like backbeat accent, so hitting the two and the four stronger, which remember is all with your right stick if you're right-handed. So we're pretty much there now, aren't we? And finally, the uh, accent with the left stick, which would come in just before beat four. Remember, this is a two-bar long phrase. It would the left stick would accent just before the beat four in the second bar. One, two, three, four, one, two, and, three, and four. One, two, three. So that's the basic idea. It's a weird thing, man. Like the position of the kick. Uh, and the accents, I can see why lots of people have said like, it, like it's even re you know, like drummers who've been playing for a while that I, I know and work with have said, oh, they've the bass drum part is really throwing them off here, and I actually get that. Uh, I personally find it 
uh, harder to play a bit more slowly. This one, as you pick up some speed, the musical flow kind of takes over. So this one, you know, like like I've said a lot before, like on this on this channel, actually on these videos, for me, the two ways of learning a coordinated groove are number one, option one, to go real slow and to pick it through. So you play the full part, all the all the limbs and all the things that you're doing, and you go one note at a time, really, really slow, and show your hands and your feet and your brain the combinations. And that's a great way to do it. Uh, if if you have to, it's not very musical. I found learning this groove that way, actually in this case, way more tricky. The the other option, option two, is to play kind of not necessarily full speed, but at a musical tempo, and play something that you can play. In this case, the foot part, and then build stuff on top of that. Like add in one thing at a time, one layer of complexity at a time until you work up to the foot. I found this much easier to play like that. So let's recap, man. Foot part. Okay, unaccented single stroke roll. And now train beat two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And last accent just before the last four. Pick it up a little bit. Hope that makes a bit of sense. Yeah, it's trickier than it first sounds, I would say, generally speaking, this one. Um, sometimes, like in the intro on the fourth bar, uh, Mick Tucker will also add in another accent on the end of beat two in the second bar. In that case, it would go. So, so from the beginning of the song, it goes. Regular. Regular again. Regular a third time, but now then. That, that fourth time, ba 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 ba. The point is, if you can go. You're up and running. To, to some extent, he was probably sort of freestyling it as he went along. If you can capture, as with, as with all of these sort of tunes, if you can capture the vibe, then you're in business. And that's probably, in all honesty, more important than going note for note on this one. Having said that, what I will do quite soon is I'll record a full um, version of this one. It's a really good song to play. Hopefully, that will get you going with it. If you if you find yourself saying the phrase, I'm struggling with this, yeah, I would personally on this one recommend going foot part. I've added in the hi-hat on the two and four. You don't have to. Then the unaccented snare drum. Then the backbeat like accent on the snare drum, as in your right stick, if your right hand plays stronger, on two and four in both the bars. And then finally that extra accent on just before the, on the end of beat three in the second bar, uh, then you're in business. All right, thanks for watching. As always, really appreciate it. Thanks to all the people who suggested that. A load of people asked about that groove. It's really interesting. And actually, I get why uh, the guys and girls who've tried it said, oh, actually, that, that bass drum's throwing me off. It's a little bit of a tricky one. The, the way the, the foot part works against the accent with your hands a little bit. But um, yeah, build it up in that way. I reckon you'll get it in no time. People always ask me what grade level these are at. I would say this one, uh, I don't know, like a three or a four, I guess, something like that. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching as always. Really appreciate it. See you soon.